Okay, there we go. How y'all doing? Y'all know who it is. It's y'all favorite dark skinned chick in the whole wide world, Rashida Strober, the world's first dark skinned activist, Rashida Strober, the queen. Okay, of dark there we go. Skin. How y'all doing? Y'all know who it is. It's y'all favorite dark skinned chick in the whole wide world, Rashida Strober, the world's first. Dark that's right. I'm the queen of dark skin. I'm the woman who put dark skin on the map, the world's first dark skin activist, the inventor of dark skin activism. And real quick, I want to say I was on the last live stream. Um, Miss Black University of Texas is not black. And my internet completely went out. OK, I want to apologize for that. But I pretty much said what I had to say in that video. Um, also, real quickly, y'all know what's going on with the dark skin activist tour. Y'all know, um, a lot of you know, or some of you don't know, but I'm actually on tour. I'm going to be at the Washington, D.C. Black Theater Festival. And let me just go ahead, because this is what I wanted to, you know, show you guys <clears throat> um, before the actual hangout went dead when my computer went out my, or my internet went out. So anyway, here's the information. A Dark Skin Woman's Revenge is going to be at the Washington, D.C. Black Theater Festival. All right, guys, um, and that's going to be on Saturday, July 1st. All right, all the information is there. I want you guys to check it out. Check me out. Come see me. It's going to be a fantastic show, and I want you guys to also donate to the Dark Skin Activist Tour. It costs money to produce these shows. It costs money. So if you are really supporting the work that I do, I want you guys to go ahead and go to my GoFundMe and help me produce this show. Help me make this thing happen, all right? Um, real quickly, I am going to go. Oh, there we go. There's my GoFundMe. All you need to do is go to my GoFundMe, and I'm going to put it in the chat box and donate. Anyone that donates, it doesn't matter how much you donate, you will get an electronic copy of my book. There you go. A dark skin woman's revenge which is an absolute treat so make sure you go and donate all right <laughs> okay so tonight i got something real special for you guys i have a dark skinned man on here he would like to remain anonymous i'm gonna stop the screen sharing um and he wants to talk about darkism his experience with darkism so without further ado, you could just chime in whenever you ready, you know, whenever you good and ready to chime in, uh, Mr. Dark Skin Man. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. All right. All right. So talk to us. Talk to us about, first of all, what is darkism to you? Uh, darkism to me is when uh, people of a darker hue, uh, black, are discriminated against for being uh, the darkest of uh, the African or uh, black racial group. Mm -hmm. uh, my experiences have been, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're the fir you're the last of everything to be picked. But uh, you know, as I got older and I came into adult adulthood, we became somewhat uh, fetishized. And, you know, there was some bright sides to it <laughs> uh, as far as, like, uh, we became the model of black manhood. And I noticed, like, when I used to read Ebony and Essence magazine, there was always this clean-cut, real dark brother in a suit. Uh, uh, in a car uh, car ad, a new car ad, and he'd be standing next to a car that was just as dark as he was. Right. So then I knew, like, okay, well, you know, I guess we're quote unquote in, you know, because a lot of people used to tell me, you know, dark skin is in, like we're some type of fad or whatever. Right. So it's just like uh, it's kind of like the same dialogue when I was a youth. And it doesn't seem like we've grown up much because I'm still kind of seeing the same thing uh, within the uh, black community. All right. Great. OK, so um, for those of you that are just tuning in, we have a dark skin brother on here that's basically wanting to just talk about his experience with darkism. So do you mind telling everyone your age? Because you, you said that the same thing is going on pretty much from the time you was 
a kid up until now. So do you mind telling us how old you are? Yes, I'm 36 years old. 36, 36. years. Okay, okay. Now, and, and that's you know that's a real good age because it's like you've been through enough to really understand or have experienced. You know what I'm saying? Darkism. So talk, just talk to us about it. You know, this is just a, this is a conversation here. This is just a real conversation. Let the people know what you've been through. Uh, I've experienced you know kind of like the same thing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people on uh, YouTube have their testimonies on dark skin, uh, yourself included. Uh, and a lot of people might not like this, Tommy Sotomayor. Uh, and a lot of people, a lot of dark skin people have these exact same stories. You know, right. except for I'm not going to be dishing out any punches uh, mainly to black women because, you know, I came up in an era where. You know, you can be walking down the street as a black male around other black men. And as soon as you make eye contact with them, they're talking about what you looking at, where you from, you know, bang, bang, bang. You know, they want to kill you dead in the streets, you know, just for, for being a black person. You so, know, I came so up that, also in that. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm yeah, I came up in that. And then, uh, you know, the whole thing with... Um, I had experience with dark skinned women where they didn't like really like being dark skinned. So they can't be seen with a dark skinned male. They, you know, and it wasn't always like that, but I've experienced enough of that to testify and say, I can point out and say, hey, I've been through this and I've heard other brothers say they went through this exact same thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and you know, it's real interesting that you just, you talked about how you could just walk down the street and see another black man and they want to fight you or, or get defensive and say, well, what you looking at? Yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, like where you're from. And, you know, I'm from the West Coast. So, you know, that was kind of a big thing when I was growing up in the 90s, you know, especially if you're not in your own neighborhood or if you're like in a neutral zone. Not e It doesn't even have to be like so-called enemy territory. You can just be walking down the street and they'll be like, yo, my nigga, where is you from? And yo, look at this nigga here, and it's just like, you know, nigga, 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 this. And then you hear from the sisters talking about, oh, that nigga this, this nigga shoes, and that nigga black, and this nigga that. You know? <laughs> and it's just like, you start to think like, you're not even African American, you a nigga. Right. Uh, on top of the darkism. So it was kind of like, a huge thing for me, and um, wow. Uh, that was experience, and I can't even believe I survived it. You know, wow, because I've seen a lot of brothers fall to that. Yep, a lot. yep, yep. I have too. I have too. It, it, even when you when you talked about the, the whole looking thing, it's like, man, I remember my son had that same issue where he had started a new school, and he yeah. was looking. He's dark skinned. He was just sitting there looking, and he said almost the same exact. Thing that you said that people got mad with him these were black people want to fight because they felt like what you looking at that's crazy it's like you can't even sit there and be a, human, a regular normal human being and look use your eyes that you know everybody got eyes people get mad because you're looking it's, it's it's the weirdest things that you know happen in darkism like the weirdest thing happened that is so interesting that you mentioned that it's like you gotta you gotta watch your body language you know what i'm saying because i think yeah. that's that's what you're talking about body language go ahead yeah um man there's so many ways i can go through with that and you know it's a whole survival mechanism within itself and you know when the police drive in your neighborhood like they always do <laughs> at least they did mine all the time and um you know, they look at you and they're studying your body language and they're looking for fear. Mm -hmm. When they study you and they're looking at you and they're looking for fear and you show some type of fear or some form of apprehension, that's when they want to stop you. Mm -hmm. But if you're walking down the street and you're just kind of like ignoring them, like they're not even there and they're just like another car just driving down the street, and you know, you, right. take, you take that on. They don't, you know, they really don't bother you, but they might, you know what I mean? Just, you know, fuck with you. Well, well, you you just but, uh, did that. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, I have been uh, pulled over and all that because, you know, uh, they think that we all got some 
some meth or some hair on on us or you know whatever because we're dark skinned or because I was dark skinned and not just because I was black you know they see me as being black and dark skinned shit I gotta have a pistol some priors a needle in my pocket and a bundle in my sock <laughs> you know what I mean and you wow. know when they see like oh yeah he don't have no, you know he don't have no priors you know and no record we gotta let him go and they're still like but he can't. He has to have a record. Nigga. They like, yo, you gotta have a record because you hella black. So it's kind of like, nah, I ain't got no record. So they just like, damn, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of like an illusion for him, like a mirage. So they, you know, kind of left me alone. Wow. A little bit on that tip, and then at the same time, when you're going through all that, you know, you kind of have like the light skin, dark skin thing. Mm-hmm. And when I was younger, my preteens, I had the issues with the light-skinned kids. It's primarily the biracial ones. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they always try to make, like, black jokes, and then I started making, like, biracial jokes. Because, you know, I watched the Jeffersons, and George Jefferson used to always be talking about, uh, 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 what's, what's his name, Willis, the Willises. And, uh-huh. you know, the zebras is coming over and all this and that. And I used to, you know, give them the zebra jokes that I learned from the Jeffersons. Oh, wow. You know, and that kind of hurt them and the, hit them in the soft spot. So they kind of left me alone. Uh, and then after that, uh, I started getting attention from light-skinned women. <laughs> More so than I was the dark-skinned women. So <laughs> it just played this strange dynamic in my life that I've learned to adjust to. Can, can you talk about that? Can you talk about... um? Because, I, you know, I, it's, it's so interesting. And I want to just say real quick to everybody that's listening, I want to say thank you for coming on here and talking about your experience as a dark skinned man and what you've gone through in terms of darkism. Because it's very important to me, and I think it is helpful to other people and therapeutic for you to speak on it and unapologetically and let people know what you have gone through. When you talk about, okay, because a lot of this starts, like you said, in, in schools. And you right, talk right. about women. Talk. Can you talk more in detail about what you went through with the women, with the girls? Should I say? Oh man, yo, like <laughs> it's funny. Um, well, I've had my friends. You know, I've had like I wasn't really hard pressed to get girls, really, but the ones that I wanted, they would be like. Nah, you know what I mean? Like, you're really dark and shit, you know. You know, people didn't want to be with somebody that they can't see and all this and that and hella extra. They and said, I remember I used to... Like, wait, well, I, I don't mean to cut you off there, but I, I, I'm i sorry. You said somebody told you that they people don't want to be with somebody they can't see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I did say that. I, I've heard that Not before. Well, what's up? Say that again. They told you that people don't want to be with somebody they can't see. Yeah, yeah, all kind of black, you know, dark skin, discouraging remarks. Man, I've heard it all. That heard it so all, cool. yo. I've heard it all, yo. All of it. I felt like I was my great grandfather <laughs> walking around the downtowns around white folks. Wow. It was just it was- an everyday thing. It was just like. Hey, there go that black motherfucker or them dark skinned people or, you know, it was just, you know, that was just the thing. You don't flinch. You don't just go, you don't gasp and be like all surprised and, you know, clutch your pearls and, you know, and be like, wow, I've never heard anything like that before. It's like, it's something that you always hear among black children, you know, and it's not an isolated thing because, you know, they play the dozens and everybody wants to try to make jokes until somebody gets jumped, knocked out or stabbed or shot or whatever you and know, you know that, that but, happens. that's the thing we don't we, we we do know you're right like this darkism in schools especially can lead to fights because i myself have gotten into fights when i was in school and that's the thing that i never wanted to happen like i see it going on when i was working in school system and i saw it going on i would stop it because i already know that people giving their feelings like you attacking somebody based on something that they can't control, their looks. So it's like, you know, but go ahead. 
Right, right. Now, I, I remember one uh, female in particular uh, that I like, and this is like my later years in high school. And I wanted to go to the junior prom with her. And um, I think she had just broken up with her boyfriend. And uh, I think I had asked her if she wanted to go to the prom. And now, mind you, her and I have the same complexion, right? Mm-hmm. And so we talked about it, about going to the junior prom. And I remember her saying something to the, to the nature of, I don't know if we can do that because we're both dark. Really? So she didn't know if she wanted yeah. to go to the prom with you because both of y'all was dark skinned. That, you know what, though? For real. That is an issue. Like, with two dark skinned people dating mm. each other, like, that 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 was an issue, too. With, with yeah, me, that- it's like they almost embarrassed to date you because y'all both dark and people would look at you like, look at you some type of way because it's like, is y'all brother? I mean, my, my ex husband is dark skinned. And I can't right. tell you how many times people would assume that we were brother and sister. Mm. Dark skin. So I can understand that. Now, I see somebody, I see somebody in this chat name, uh, 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 Sarah, Sarah, talking about they're speaking about Africans. No, we ain't speaking about no Africans, yo. We're talking about right here in the United States of America. Just to get that straight, I saw somebody in the chat room like, I don't know what the fuck that nigga was talking about, but oh yeah, um, I mean ab- yeah, absolutely, we're talking about this is what goes on in black America, like you said like I can't speak for what goes on in Africa, the reason why I can't, because I am I don't live there, but over here we can tell you what we have gone through in dark skin, um, you know what I'm saying, in school and 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 just growing up in in black neighborhoods and how it was. So this is about African Americans, not to throw shade on any any experience that's going on in other parts of the world. Because I have talked to dark skinned people from different parts of the world. But yes, this is the Black American experience. I'm glad you clarified that. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Now um, it's funny because as you know, I went through a couple of more issues of that. You know sporadically in my life but uh i remember as an adult um it was almost like it never happened like i never had that experience like i had to regain certain reforms of my self-esteem again and um you know kind of like reform myself and i've noticed like here we go the typical situation the white women started paying attention to me Mm-hmm. And uh, also with the others, mm-hmm. and and the black women, uh, you know, as I got older into adulthood, and so I just thought it was funny. It was like, yo, like y'all used to say all this when I was young, and now that I'm older, it's like then I learned what the stereotype was. You know, mm-hmm. if you're, you know, you're real dark and you've got a wide nose and big feet, you know, you means you're you're good in bed and all that shit. You know what I mean? So I heard that stereotype. <laughs> oh, just to, just to, just to chime in here, someone says something very important. I want to know what you think about this. It's piggybacking off of what we just talked about a few moments ago. Um, Dorothy says, dark-skinned people are discouraged from dating each other. People say your kids are going to be too dark. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's very old. And I don't know about the youth today, um, but I just know growing up, everything was like, you know, being dark-skinned was kind of like a joke, almost. And I remember, and I'm glad somebody mentioned that, because it just brought me back to uh, a year that I had in high school, this one dude I knew named uh, KD, and he was mm-hmm. like our complexion. He might have been a little darker. And um, I remember, yo, man, the streets turned us out so bad. Yo. My mm-hmm. dude was a pimp, like at a young age. And um, he was doing some work with his brother and all that. And so he had already had self esteem, dialogue with women at very high levels, like, you know, for our age. 
you know, and um, I remember seeing him walk up to some of the females in the school that half of the dudes were scared to just walk up and talk to. And he would just walk right up to him and talk to him like it was nothing, yo. Like it was nothing. And I remember then I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm like, wow, where is he getting this uh, this confidence to just walk up there like that? Like, I've never seen anybody comfortable in their own skin like that, regardless of skin tone. So right. especially for a dark skin man to be like that, that, that was just like revolutionary for me. To see. Oh wow! You know what? You got it's a lot of people. Um, uh, and, and people, I just want you guys to know that you know, I'm looking away from the screen. I'm looking at the chat box, monitoring what people are saying in response to what you're talking about. Um, and real quickly, I want you to know that Adrian says he has had the same experiences as, as you. Um, but as he got older, yeah, changed because his skin got like smooth and dark. And then Afri zero zero wanted to know. She said, I have a question for the guest speaker. Are you attracted to dark skinned women? Be honest. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Expound. Talk about it. <laughs> oh man, see, like, okay, now let me clarify that. Now, I don't know if she heard earlier when I was talking about the dark skinned woman that I wanted to go to the junior prom with. Mm -hmm. Her and I were the same complexion. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, even before that, even in my younger years, scenario, but there has been many, many, many times, uh, and even in my youth, where I had like the biggest crushes on the dark skinned girls. Mm -hmm. So I've never, I was one of those black people, like, uh, I was never like, oh, I only like light skinned girls and only like this type of girl or. Only like the ones that can keep their mouth shut, or only like the ones with a big behind, or only like the way I was never like that. <laughs> I mean, I had some Negro ways, but that wasn't one of them. Right. You, you feel you feel what I'm saying? You, you so have, yes, to answer your question, absolutely. I'm sorry, there's some tapping going on in the back. Like, do you hear that noise? Like, it's a tap, tap, tap. That is that there's your a tap, tap, tap. Computer doing that or? Where, 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 where are you from? What do you mean? I hear tapping in the background. It's weird. Like, it's really weird. I don't know. It might be like my mic. Oh. I'm trying to, like, pull that out. Sorry, guys, about these little technical itches that's going on here. Right, right, I'm, right, right. But, um, I'm trying to figure out what that little tap, tap noise is. You don't hear that? Yeah, I hear I hear the feedback from your end, but I can hear it a little bit through the uh, through the mic here. It's so weird. Like it's making like a tap 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 sound really loud. I hope it's not coming through you know, the podcast. Uh, I don't know, yo. I don't know. Does anybody hear a tap 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 noise? Did you hear a tap tap like a tapping noise? There, it, it stopped. Something you did made it stop. Thank you, Miss Faith. There it goes again, though. Yeah, see, I had took my, I had unplugged my mic, and uh, it was making that sound again. They hear it. Um, some of the people in the chat, they're saying that they do hear the little tap tap noise. Sorry, guys. No, it's not Chrissy tapping, uh, Miss Faith Lisa oh, Butterfly. Leave that out please. Um, yeah, they're saying that they hear it. I'm yeah, it's the, it's the mic. It's the mic. Is there a way that you could take that mic out of there? And yeah, I don't have another one. Because you may I not even, have. You may not even need. See, it's not even. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. See, it's gone now. Oh, that's a good question, Todd Bleach. That's a very good question. Yeah, see, it doesn't it doesn't work. Oh wow. Dang. Is it like really bad, yo? Um, yeah, they the people in the chat box can hear it, but I guess we could try to talk on through it. Somebody else had another question for you. 
Yes, go ahead. Two. My question was, what about when you are in awe of a of dark skin? Is that still color struck? That's a very interesting question. What do you think about that? No, it's self appreciation. Okay. <laughs> hey, how about that? Self appreciation. Write mm -hmm. that down, folks. Write that down. Why is it self appreciation if if it if you're in awe of dark skin? Um, well, you know, I, I, I talked to this uh, to a friend of mine the other day, and I, I, we kind of made a joke. And I say, you know, uh, the white man has uh, the blonde and the brunette. And then I say, you know, we got the light skin and the dark skin. So it's like, hey, you know, whatever. And since I'm a dark skinned man, you know, I do like dark skinned women, you know, right. for me. You know, I when I when you know there's light skin sisters that's fine. You know, no doubt, no doubt. You know, no shade at them. But uh, usually, when I saw dark skin women, they usually had, you know, they usually were the thickest. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. And okay. on top, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, yo, like she, she's thick. Dude. So. Okay. I mean, hey, you sharing your experiences. I don't discount anybody's experience. You know, it is what it is, and I, I, I respect it. Um, so, do you feel that, like, there's a, a huge difference in between the darkism that you experienced when you was coming up, as opposed to the darkism? Like, do you think it's worse or getting better, or what? What do you think? Uh, now it's uh, completely economic. Okay. Completely. Completely, completely, completely. Um, you know, I never thought when I was younger that it, I would have a hard time finding employment because of my skin tone. Right. Like, really? I thought that was just something, you know, we went through as kids when, you know, we get picked on, you know, we play the dozens, you know. Right. But I didn't know that was something that went on with black adults. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't know that that was something that went on with black adults. So I have got, man, I went through the motherfucking ringers, yo. Mm -hmm. Through the ringer. You know what I'm saying? Talk about that, what, what you went through with employment. Because there are studies, and I keep telling people, there's the studies out here that prove that the darker you are, you're going to have some issues uh, in regards to getting employment, education. So can you please... Please, you are a real live, and I know that he's dark skinned because I saw him. Like, could you please right. talk about your experiences with employment situations and being dark Ooh. and darkism? Uh, oh man, it, it can be really, really rough. I mean, I noticed like most times when I did get hired, it was to fulfill quotas, and I've been told that before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but I have been in situations where I was the only black person working at a specific place. Um, I've been, you know, I've been in situations where I've gone to interviews and they didn't even want to look at me because I don't look the sound way, the I don't look the way I sound over the phone. You know, prior to speaking to uh, the HR department or the supervisor or what have you. Um, Oh man, it's it's, it's nasty because I noticed like of all the black people who were unemployed and were in these uh, career centers and they're looking for jobs or they're in the the, uh, the welfare WIC office, you know, to get some stuff to hold them over till they find something. Right. Uh, most of them are dark. Yeah. If you look at it, most of them were dark skinned. And most of them were dark skinned males. Huh. You know, and I noticed like when dark skinned men or black men in particular get denied so many times, they just like, man, fuck it, I ain't gonna be breaking my ass and risking my self esteem, you know, to get some job that's gonna pay me twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars an hour when I can just go hang out here at my, you know, I can go over here and go do this, that, and the third, and make huh. three times that. You know, in two weeks. Right. So you know, that's a whole battle uh, within itself that uh, doesn't go away. You know what I mean? 
unless there's like an opportunity to where you're working with a group of people or uh, I noticed like uh, for black men the, the easiest way to sustain yourself in the economy of the United States of America is to pledge in some type of fraternity because I know there's black men who pledge in fraternities it's like <laughs> you know they're walking on a bridge without having to walk through the swamp to get to their goal if that makes mm -hmm. sense yes it does you know oh. and, I, and I learned like when I look at magazines like Essence and Ebony magazine and I've been flipping through the pages of these magazines for a couple decades you know and every time I look in there it's like most of the successful black men are um, uh, 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 Delta, not Delta, uh, <laughs> I'm out of that, <clears throat> Alpha, Omega, Kappa, and mm -hmm. they're like CEO of this and president of this company, entrepreneur of this, and they're usually married to a sister who's like uh, a Kappa or a Delta or something like that, right? So then I noticed those are the most successful black relationships are the ones who pledged. And a lot of people don't talk about that hmm. for one reason or another or whatever, you know. Uh, so I kind of got lost there and went to like a, a little ramble. But, well, um, you bring in the knowledge and people, people, have, people have questions for you. Um, you said like so much, so many things that kind of that just really touched at my heart you know you talked about how some of these uh welfare programs like the wick and the food stamp offices and whatnot and you see a lot of dark-skinned people in there you know they on hard times and you said you saw you see a lot of dark-skinned men and i'm gonna be honest with you i've seen the same exact thing and i'm glad that i'm not thinking i'm going crazy because i've seen it myself with my own eyes um and that that's the part of darkism that really breaks my heart to look at kids like you said when you're young you're bringing up so many great things you said like when you're young you don't know that you're going to go up and have to go from actual darkism that's going to affect your, your economics that's why i came up with the term economic darkism I, it's so it's so much stuff here but real quickly someone asked the question i think you kind of addressed it a little bit but they wanted to know um miss faith Lisa Butterfly says, but it seems like dark skinned males are considered sexy by women. Does he experience that? Uh, do we are we considered sexy by other women? Is that what she said? Yes. yes. Uh yes, we are. Well, I know I've been in that situation where I was considered or am considered as such. Yes, I do. I do go through that. I mentioned nice. that earlier. Uh, I don't know if I went into detail about that. But yes, to answer her question, the answer is yes. Okay, okay. Um, I kind of just want to get back on, I want you to share more of your experiences, if you don't mind, about the economics of it. Because again, that is the part that really tugs at my heart. And when I talk about this, um, this equalization of dark skin, I don't want it to be a situation where it's just like one or two or three or a few dark skinned people are able to get access to, you no, know, cause I hear some people they'll come at me and they'll say, well, Rashida, there's a lot of um, dark skinned women that are doing good. And, and I understand that. But on a whole, when we look, when we look at the stats and y'all know I done presented the stats to y'all many a times, the stats are there, uh, dark skinned people do experience the worst when it comes to economics. It's, it's been proven. So I wanted you to just speak more on that because I think as you speak about that experience, it helps people to understand and to conceptualize this thing about systemic economic darkism. Right. Um, well, it, it, it's kind of, it's almost uh, another world. Uh, when it comes to uh, black men and women of a uh, darker hue and the workforce. I mean, the dialogue can be a little different, mm -hmm. but yet it can be the same as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I've noticed, like, I've seen uh, dark-skinned women who I met one uh, years ago, and uh, she said the longest she's been out of work was, like, uh, a month. I think she said a month. Man, I looked at her like I was like, she was like, wow. Like, I'm looking at her like, you're not even, I mean, because I know her. She wasn't even all that smart, yo. And I'm just like, yo, like, how did you even get in here, yo? Like, like, what's going on? Hmm. And I've seen brothers, uh, one conscious brother that I knew from back in the day. And uh, he told me he was unemployed for five years, this guy wow. told me. Five years. Wow. And um, I noticed, uh, and I hate to say this, I noticed that a lot of prostitution comes through this from a lot of the black men. Hmm. Um, well, I've heard of scenarios where, um, you know, apart from peddling, substances that they're like oh uh, yeah I seen this one chick I really don't like her but I'm gonna sling this to her you know for $250 or I need some house keys or something like that because you know at times it's hard B. and I'm just like yo man I dig it yo like who wants to be up here signing these motherfucking papers all day you would think we were celebrities the way we were signing our names on them applications all motherfucking day so <clears throat> I've seen a lot of the dark, dark sides of uh, being a black man in America and being a very dark, complex man on top of that. Um, what do you think it would take? Like, when we, when we talk about being dark, seeing it from jobs and being at the what do you think it would take as a dark skin man? Uh, you're going to have to repeat that because you got kind of low on that okay. question. No, I was just asking you, given a situation that we know where it's hard for a dark skin man, in terms of mm-hmm. economic opportunity, what do you think it's going to take? Like, what do you think it's going to take to get access to a fighting chance to be economically successful? What do you think it takes? Well, I kind of look at it as a, uh, a sports scenario. And the halftime, you know, halftime's approaching, or we're in the fourth quarter. And you're going to have to make a decision. Either you're going to take the low ball, which I say is like three, four, or five yards down the field. Or um, you're going to have to pledge or join some type of, join some type of uh, fraternity. <laughs> I'm seeing, because I'm seeing that they're the ones or like really have both hands on all professional markets all of them mm-hmm. any professional market that's going to pay you uh, $60,000 a year annually and above so okay. you're either going to go back to college and uh, uh, pledge and hope you can get in and shake hands with people or you can go work for yourself or work for the county or do fucking street repairs or so my kids are so bad. It's like really, really, really bad. My mic is bad. Your your mic is messing up so bad it's causing me to have issues like clearly hearing you. Wow. I'm not even doing anything. I don't know what's happening. Can you hear me now? Um it's really messing up. Like it's it's a lot of static. There it stopped. How about now? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but it's a lot of static. Wow. Can you see me? Can you walk off and log back in and come back in? Maybe that might solve the problem. Uh, I don't know. Let me, let me check this out. Let me check this out. Because the static is to the point where I can like, barely hear you. Okay, guys, um, this wonderful dark-skinned man that has taken the time to come on here and graciously share his experiences with darkism, he is having some issues with the mic. Hopefully, he's able to resolve the issue so we can keep talking about this, this situation with darkism. And he's really, I want to appreciate him because 
he's bringing some real life experience to the whole discussion of darkism. He's telling us what he's, his real lived experience is as a dark skinned man. And I really wanna appreciate that because I know that there's people out here that is that are listening. Some of you may not understand what darkism is. Some of you may have experienced darkism and it validates your experience. I will never forget and I wish I could get this dark skinned man to come on and speak about it. Um, this dark skinned man, he talked about the fact that he takes my book with him to work every day. He works in corporate America. He takes darkism, 25 ways dark skinned people are discriminated against because he said to me when he read this book, he knew that what he had been going through, what he had been experiencing was not in his head. And that's the reason why I do what I do because I want people's experiences to be validated because for a long time, I thought that it was just all in my head. I thought I was just being overly sensitive or I was just, you know, and I was afraid to speak about it because people would say, oh, you know, you're, you know, you're jealous or, you know, y'all know how people would do. But these things are not in our head. Like I, I got somebody on here today and he prefers not that for us to mention his name, but I can tell you he's a very dark skinned black man and he's very dark skinned, um, handsome, smooth, chocolate skinned black man. Um, and he's sharing his experiences with us. And I hope that it helps somebody. I hope that, you know, darkism helps somebody. And hopefully he's able to come back on. I want to encourage you guys. As you guys know, I am on the Dark Skin Activist Tour. I am asking my subscribers. I am asking the people that enjoy what I do, believe in what I do. I'm asking y'all to support me. Support me. Support me. My goal, someone asked what the goal was. And I'm glad that you asked the goal. For this particular show, the goal is to raise $2,000. So that I can go ahead and produce this show the proper way that it needs to be produced um, on the Washington DC Black Theater Festival. So I'm gonna be at the DC Black Theater Festival. I'm working very hard on it. Um, I, there's travel expenses, um, accommodation expenses, um, marketing expenses. Uh, you know, there's expenses that are associated, venue expenses. There are expenses that are associated with producing this show. So I'm asking you, if you believe in what I do, all you gotta do is donate, it's simple. I mean, a person that donates in any amount will get a copy, an electronic copy of my book, Adult Skin Women's Revenge. And you guys know I have a proven track record, a proven track record, that's key. I'm not one of those that come on the internet and ask people to donate money to me and don't produce results. Y'all know I don't produce show after show after show after show right here on YouTube, okay? My most recent show on the Dark Skin Activist Tour was the Tucson, Arizona show. Um, which was in March. And then before that, I produced multiple shows in 2016. Before that, I've been producing shows out of my own pocket. So I'm asking you, if you enjoy what I do, donate, support it. We've got to start supporting each other. We have got somebody asked me, somebody said to me, I hope that you can continue to uh, produce, your, to continue to have funding to produce your shows. And you guys can help with that. You guys can help with that. Y'all know I actually, like I said, I don't just come on YouTube. I've never just came onto YouTube. I've always been doing my shows in front of the people off the ground in front of the people because that's really what I love to do. I like to be like physically in front of the people. And the play of Dark Skin Woman's Revenge is a powerful, powerful play. I think that we got the brother back. Donate, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Awesomeness, we back, we back. Let me go back to the chat box here. And I hope that we can get these issues rectified here with the audio, but it's, it's oh, natural, natural beauty asked a question. She asked a real good question. Okay, go ahead. What is it? Well, let me see what she asked. I got to scroll up. She asked, has he dated outside his race and did he find that he was appreciated more by other races? Yes, I've dated outside my race and no, I have not found that I was appreciated by other races. Um, appreciated how did they appreciate my time uh, did they appreciate my compliments I mean that's a pretty broad mm -hmm. uh, question and appreciation is something special like love or respect you know it's something that you come across by a uh, few people you know especially mm -hmm. when you're looking for it within your own race uh, especially in the times we're in now that can be a uh, Sometimes that can be kind of difficult. And uh, to add on to that, 
uh, I had a friend of mine. Uh, we were kind of working in the same business at the time, uh, some years back, and um, he was the one who got, gave me a lot of information about consciousness, but he didn't introduce me into it. And he did a lot of jobs. Uh, we lived in the same city. He did a lot of jobs out of state, and he had to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. And he told me, and we always talked about black women and black issues and all that. And he told me that, you know, you know, all black women aren't the same as they are out here. And I looked at him, and I'm like, and I'm trying to visualize something that I've never seen before, mm-hmm. right? So you can imagine what that look is like. It's kind of like confusion. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to him. He says, like, they don't have those same type of bad habits like they have out here. And he said that in other states, it's usually black men going out to white women and not black women. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Like, I've never even, I never would have thought of anything like that because in the state that I'm in, it's the opposite. It's usually yeah. the black females going out and the black men are usually dating within their race. So I'm hearing this about people in other states. And mind you, at mm-hmm. this time, I have not lived outside of the state that I'm in now until, until later years. So uh, that was a very uh, interesting lesson for me. Right. Well, I, you know, again, for those of you that are just tuning in, I got to say to this dark skinned man, he wants to remain anonymous. And I want to make sure I let you know and I let everybody know I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on here sharing your experience. Like I am so happy that you've taken the time to come and talk to the people. Like this is like awesome. thank you. bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. Because you're really shedding light on how darkism affects black men. I'm very concerned with that. I, you know, I got I see so much. I see so much poverty. I see so much uh mistreatment. I see so much unfairness. Completely breaking my heart. Very upsetting to me. It's why I do the work I do. I want to tell you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And yes, I wanted to just piggyback back on what you just said. When I was in Tucson, the black women told me after I finished the woman play, they told me this. This is why it's important for me to move around and physically be there in front of the people because I love to talk to the people. They said, Rashida, the black men. Here in Tucson, they don't like us. When they said that to me, that broke my heart. They said this to me. And it's it's one thing to talk about my experience. I tell you this, I'm sitting in front of them. It's another thing. So these dynamics, they work, they go both ways. Let me just say this. I want to be so clear about this. This is not about not liking anybody. I wish people would stop using that as a as a, as a, as a, a deflection because it has nothing to do with that. I love everybody. I get along with everybody. I ain't never had a problem with nobody. The thing is, it's about empowerment. It's about access. You know, it's about fairness. It's about self-esteem. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. That's what Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I see uh, this guy, uh, Tem Tem, in the chat room. He said that California is a big swirling state. And yes, Tem Tem, that's actually the state that I'm talking about. It's, uh, they call it uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm-hmm. They call that what they call the state of California. Mm-hmm. And uh, somebody else raised the question here. Uh, then you would find that different races say something like, oh, I love your skin, it's so smooth. Yes, I have heard that uh, natural beauty twenty six. Yes, I have. Yeah, and it's like you want to hear it from. I don't know. With me personally, I don't know how you feel about this, but I always want to hear it from people that beat me up for this. I don't know why, but I always want to hear it from my black men. I love compliments genuine compliments from like men i just do that's just how i'm wired like you know it is what it is 
it does something to my spirit. It does something good to my spirit, to my self-esteem. When a black man will tell me, you're beautiful, you're pretty. I love that. So it's nothing, to me, it's like it's nothing like it when, it, when you hear it from your own. Because that means that you're finding the beauty in me. When you look at me and you see me as you know your reflection, you're finding the beauty in me. I don't see what the problem is. I, I, you know, I don't see what the problem is. Someone was asking me, and I'm, I'm trying like to monitor the chat box as best I can. Forgive me if I don't get to your question. Um, Go ahead. I know I'm having people are talking about the technical issues we're having. They still hearing the tap, tap, tapping. I'm not sure why that's going on, y'all. I apologize for that. Yeah, it's uh, it's my mic. It's my it's so, my mic. So someone was asking about the percentage of Europeans in Africa. I do not know the percentage. That's a very good question. I don't know, but what I can do is I can look that information, do some research on it, and get back to you. So I hope you heard that. And then someone else asked about, and I think that this would be a, a good question to piggyback off of for you. They asked me, okay. they said, uh, Miss, Miss Faith, Lisa Butterfly said, Rashida, I have a controversial question for you. Do you think perhaps the trauma you experienced Cause causes you to sometimes ignore the achievements of dark skinned women like you think Oprah, Maxine Waters, and Lauren Hill. Um, I think that's a two part question. That's a, a question that you can answer from a male perspective, and I can answer it from a female perspective. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, y'all. We got so much static in the background. The mic is got so much static in the background. Hope you guys can hear me clearly. Gonna, um, yeah, yeah, your mic was kind of going in and out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try now to. We can, I can hear you. Mic down a little bit. I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. Okay, so okay. Let me answer that question real quick. The thing is, I don't think that my trauma causes me to ignore the achievements of dark skin people because I recognize the achievements of dark skin people. And the thing is. We have to understand that there's a small percentage in comparison to people of other groups and races. When you compare the achievers, the dark skin achievers, to the non dark achievers, there is a disparity. And what I'm trying to do is close that gap. I'm trying to somehow figure out a way to balance. So no, I'm not ignoring it because I love Lauren Hill. Like anybody that's really following me, they know that I absolutely adore Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill never spoke about, she never, I never really heard her speak about being dark skin and whatnot. But the thing is, she, she was so talented and so special and beautiful and, and, and just, Lauren Hill just is, she just in her own class. Like there's Lauren Hill, I don't got no words. Huh? I just think she's angelic. So no, I'm always, um, if you guys go back and look at my old videos, my first start on YouTube, one of the first YouTube videos that I made was about Lauren Hill, because I adore Lauren Hill. I feel that she has a pure heart. I feel that she really, really loves humanity. I feel she loves black people. And when I see somebody like that, I can do nothing but respect them. Uh, Michelle Obama is another nurse in black woman. I got, I have, I cannot even put into words the amount of respect that I have for her. Because I, when, when, I, when I feel that a person really cares for other human beings, that is what draws me to I need to feel you really care. And I think these people really care from their heart more than anything else. And that is what drives me towards them. Same thing with Oprah Winfrey. I believe that she actually cares about all humanity. Um, so no, I'm not minimizing or ignoring the contribution of dark skin. In fact, I praise them even more. Shout out to Cola Blue. Not a so Cola Blue, but a mother of this thing. Um, I just want more dark skinned people to have access. When I look at Africa, when I look at Africa, Africa, the situation that the dark skinned people are in over there breaks my heart. Poor people around the world. I have a problem with poverty around the world. And there's a disproportionate amount of poor people that are dark skin. I have an issue with them. I, I hope I answered your question. What, what's, your, what's your take on it? On uh, what? Uh, 
No, you're going to have to. Re go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No problem. The question that she was asking me, if I could just go back up, I'm going to. Bear with me one second. Um, okay. She was asking me about my trauma. She said, uh, Do you think perhaps the trauma you experience causes you to sometimes ignore the achievements of dark skinned women? So that could be, you know, do you think, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think that the trauma that you went through as a dark skinned man going through darkism, does that make you ignore the achievements of some dark skinned men? You know, like you got your Michael Jordan, et cetera. Yeah, but, you know, it comes to a point to where, you know, uh, it's all in the rap music, you know. Hey, yo, I ain't got no wicked jump shot, and but I got these rhymes. So, to answer that question is, it's a yes and no, and I'm going to go into that. Um, yes, I've seen Wesley Snipes on TV. I've seen Michael Jordan on TV. I've seen Tupac. Uh who used to live in my city. Um, hey, and that's something, right? Small world. Um, but I seen them as not people who were making it, but guys who can get laid by any woman they wanted. And they had the nicest jewelry and the nice cars, and they were very skilled at what they did. Now, as far as just the life, no, because I know I had to walk in my own shoes and I had to fight my own battles. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if you want to call that a catch twenty two or not. Well, it can sometimes be, but continue. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I really don't have anywhere else to go with that. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. You know. When we, when we talk about, cause at some point we gotta we gotta come up with solutions, and everybody got has their own solutions to how we can you know solve darkism. What are some of your solutions? What can we do to solve this of darkism? What can we do? Uh, to solve darkism. I think the way we can do that is. Um, there has to be, and I don't want to say like what Adolf Hitler did. You know, he had a genius idea. You know, he was like, uh, everybody, I seen you squint up. <laughs> I seen your face just now. Oh, did you? I, when, yeah, I seen Hitler say, you know, blonde hair and blue eyed people need to stand up and they need to rise up together. And, you know, that superior super race thing. And I think that dark skinned people in America need to come up with this super race type of ideology. Like a rejuvenation it doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to go around throwing people in gas chambers and ovens or anything oh, like no. that. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that like that, but I'm just saying like. Peaceful. You got to be peaceful. I like peace. I don't like conflict. You know I do not like conflict. Oh, uh, well. Well, you know, in a man's life, you know, uh, I would love to, you know, just lay around in the shade and fan myself and eat mangoes. But, uh, you know, you know, there's always the call of duty <laughs> and with, in any avenue of life when you're a man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, we need to start, uh, you know, you know, coming out with these, you know, testimonies and start being real and you know uh, put on the shoe that the earth has made for us so to speak mm -hmm. yes 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 yeah, um, yeah I, I think that what we have to do one of the most important things that we could do if we could just be honest about it, number one, that's the first thing that I like to start off with. Um, whenever we talk about how can we solve darkism, um, we gotta be honest about it and actually admit that it, it exists. Because if we're not gonna admit that it exists, then like it's gonna be hard for us to come to a solution. We gotta solve the problem. So another thing that I think that we have to do, because again, I want to go back to the idea of systemic economic darkism. You even you talk about you touched on how. You know, darkism has affected you. It's a 
economically, on an economic level. I think oh, we yeah. gotta do we gotta create more economic opportunities. And it, it has to be fair. It has to be I, I cannot emphasize enough fairness. Let's be fair. Let's help people. You understand what I'm saying? Um yeah. let's make sure everybody gets a proper education that they need. Let's make sure that someone wants to have a certain type of business to you know that they get access. Let's not discriminate if we see somebody walk into a job because they're dark. You know, let's not do things like that. Because that impacts people's economic livelihood. So let's you know, for example, you go to these uh a lot of homeless Let's go help people. Let's let's figure out a way to create economic opportunity. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that everyone is gonna be like if you extend the olive branch to everybody and you say here's some help and everybody's gonna take it because obviously you know that everybody is not gonna they're not gonna do it. Some people are just lazy and that's skin color and it doesn't matter. Some people just don't want to put in the work. All I'm saying is Let's create the opportunity. Let's be out fairly. I think a lot of times a person, even a person down for so long that they just like, and I'm not one to make it. I don't like to make it. I like fighting. But sometimes for some people, you can be a person down for so long that it's hard for that person to come back. You see yeah. that? So it's yeah. like, let's, you know, let's figure out a way to bring the person back up, bring the people up that want to go. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the uh, the morale is very important when it's time to you know uh, put the foot put the feet on the pavement. You know, with confidence and self confidence, because you know self confidence is everything. You know, you can't do anything without self confidence. You can have all the skill in the world. If you don't have any self-confidence, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And that's why I went back into, uh, you know, the quote-unquote Adolf Hitler thing. You know, he made sure that those people had self-esteem. You know, they had pamphlets, literature, art, uh, and, you know, uh, these kinds of things that show the, the so-called super race in glorious positions, you know. They had them in nice paintings and, uh, you know, active, you know, have them looking strong and all this and that. So, you know, I think that's something that's needed. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly just, you know, artwork and these kind of things. Though I think that would be a good idea, you know, art of dark skinned people, you know, without the uh, stereotypes, without a basketball or. You know, he ain't got to be with superpowers, you know, just a regular black, strong-ass man. And I think, and women. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Essence and Ebony magazines has been selling magazines for the last 60 years. is because of these images. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah, your image is very important. And then I see a lot of people, a lot of sisters saying, um, uh, what, are they, what are they saying? About Hollywood is not giving them a good image. But don't wait for Hollywood to give you a good image, yo. I'm going to say that straight up. Don't wait on Hollywood to give you a Grammy, I mean, not a Grammy, a Tony Award or an Oscar and all that. It's about what you do with your own image. Because they're going to say about you whatever they want to say about you. And they're going to say about me whatever they want to say about me. And they're going to call out whoever else overseas and, and put them in a certain light and image. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of goes back to what Malcolm X said. But they've been doing it before even Malcolm X even spoke about it. And they're still doing it today. So, you know, it's up to us to present our own image. Uh... I like to say to the women, don't fret about the hair thing. Because I know a lot of asshole women with natural hair. <laughs> so, you know, you know, stay true to yourself. And uh, love is the most powerful force in the universe. Oh, I agree. I'm, you know, I'm glad you said that. I know you was uh, I know you was saying about the 
about Hitler and I just Hitler is just a person to me that I don't like Hitler because of what he did. Again, at heart I am a humanitarian. I love human beings of all colors and you and I can't stand what Hitler did. I do understand what you were saying. About yeah. Him. Yeah, I wasn't going into his actions. I was just going into that yeah. template of how he was presenting the image. But yeah. just to bring it back off of what you just said, to bring it back around to what you just said, it's about love. You're right. I agree with you. It's about self-love. And when people love themselves and when people can love other people for who they are, then I think that that would make a change. You know, people say, you know, because you, know, you talked about when you was growing up, people would say all the types of disparaging things to you about your dark skin. You know, uh, yeah. When people could love you for being dark skin, I think that's a part of the answer. And natural beauty, back to just to mention her name again, she talks about teaching the children to love all different food and not um, think that one is better than the other. You know what I'm saying? So it, I, I, I agree with you 100%. It is about love. Because if we loved each other, if we truly loved each other, then I wouldn't even be on here speaking about dark skin activism. Yes, and you know, I want to say this. I'm glad you piggybacked off of that. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we always talk about, hey, you know, black girls need to start their own business. They need to start their own this. They need to start their own that. Uh, I think the one primary thing that we've forgotten is you have to enforce love. You got to enforce it. Like, with force. Love by force. You got to exert it because we're just sitting there and we got these same problems we got and you tell them to start their own business, they're going to be worse off than they were when they were looking for jobs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to enforce love. No mammal creature on this planet works and fights and eats by itself. Everything moves in the pack. That's right. You know what I mean? Except for, you know, uh, the Negro. You know, uh, there are certain pockets, elements of the black community that does work together. And that's gangs <laughs> and the black elite. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is just bumping into each other and hoping that they can come up on something good so they can marry him for a status or whatever. Mm -hmm. so, you know, some end of the plantation type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 my spin on it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I wanna thank you very much for coming over here and speaking about your experiences with darkism as a dark skin. It was skin. Guys, I can vouch for the fact. I know he's not showing his face. I did try to get him to But I mean I'm not here to force anybody <laughs> to show their face, but I'm glad that you came on here and you shared your experience with Because I do believe, not even that I believe, I know that it's helping other people to help other people to understand and to validate their feelings and just, just to understand people. That's another thing. Just like like just to understand where a person is coming from. You ain't gotta agree with somebody to understand where they're coming from. So I definitely wanna thank you. Is there anything else you wanna say about this, about darkness? Uh yes, I, I I was scrolling through and I saw somebody talk about the weave, the whole weave thing. Like I understand. I never even put my personal spin on uh, natural hair versus weave. Maybe we can do that another time. But you know, to touch on that, me personally for myself, no, I rather not deal with a weave or a wig because I never understood why a twenty-five. Are you there? Wig okay, or a weave like she's a 90 year old woman. I never understood that. I, I mean, maybe in their world, in the female world, it makes sense. It's fashion or whatever. For, but for me personally, I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I would prefer them with their own hair. Even if they got a ball fade, <laughs> even if she got a short uh, natural or. You know what I'm saying? She got locks or something, you know, or braids. I can rock with that, personally, for me. You know? Right. And I saw that brought up in the 
chat, and I'm glad somebody brought that up, you know, because I know uh, we touch, a lot of the guys touch on that sometimes, so, you know. Well, I think that's something that... Uh, go ahead, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I see somebody... Oh, it's all good. I see somebody named Natural Beauty 26. She says, wish he would show his face. Yes, I just Yo. thought. See, I told you people want you to, they want to see you. I, I was telling you that. Oh, yeah, yo, you know what I mean? Maybe next time, natural. Maybe next time. That would be lovely. Next time. Definitely, definitely that would be. Yeah, I don't want to make it like home improvement where you never see the dude on the other side of the fence. You just see his, his hat and hear his voice. You see, I was telling you that. <laughs> Before we got started, I was like, woo, we should show you face. Everybody see how happy you are. But I mean, Y'all, y'all see, y'all try, but I can't, I can't make it next time. Yeah, maybe next time, maybe next time, y'all, maybe next time. All right, okay, well, um, real quick before I leave, I want you guys to know once again, I'm going to be at the Washington, D.C. Black Panther Festival. Yes, I'm going to be there. Yes, I'm going to be there. 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 I'm going to be Here. Uh, yes, so everybody can see. And then I asked my brother to please, can you please mute your your computer stuff on you? Oh, me? Thank you, dog. Yeah, okay, that noise stopped. Like it stopped. Okay, so guys, real quick, I want to remind y'all. I'm going to be at the Washington, D.C. Black Theater Festival, July 1st, Saturday. I want you guys to come out and see this show. This is the best one-woman show you ever going to see in your life. Um, it's going to make you laugh. It's going to make you cry. It's going to make you think. It's going to entertain you. Come out and see it. Also, I would like to ask everyone, everyone that is watching this live stream to go and donate. Go, go donate to my GoFundMe. It costs me money to make these shows happen. So I'm not just sitting up here on the internet talking to you guys. I actually do my thing on the ground level. I love to be in front of the people. Please, please go make a donation so that I can continue to produce these live shows because people want this. The people love seeing these live performances. I know I've witnessed with my own eyes time and again. I've spent my own money to make these shows happen. But again, in order for me to keep doing what I do, I need the support of the people. So I am asking everyone on this live chat, um, I'm sorry, everyone on this live stream, I'm gonna copy and paste the link here. And I'm gonna ask you guys to go and make a donation, go and make this happen so that I can come to DC in July and perform this excellent one woman show. You could also go to my website as well and i'm gonna type it in right now um hold on one second that's the go from me i was trying to go to my website here uh rashida strober.com hold on one moment bear with me let's see if it comes up like that here we go rashida strober.com go to my website and support support i need the support of the people folks i cannot stress that enough y'all know i bring y'all i bring it to y'all i bring y'all good stuff y'all know that y'all can always count on me for the real so go to my website rashidastrobo.com aka queen of dark skin.com uh and scroll on down and there you go there's the three ways to support me you can click that gofundme or you can go to my PayPal and get a copy of my books. My books are $25 each, or you can send in a donation through the mail, however you want to do it, whatever is easiest for you. I, I need your support. I absolutely need your support. So go ahead and donate and make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. I cannot stress it enough, people. I cannot stress it enough. Um, I'm going to stop the screen sharing. Back again. And I just want to say, do you do you have anything else that you want to say before we close out? Because I think this has been a discussion. Um, um, I don't know. I mean, does anybody else have it? Did you see any more questions? Let me quickly go back to the chat box and see what we got. Um, 
Oh, Natural Beauty says that she enjoyed the show and she wants you to come back on here soon. So the consistency. Oh, yeah. People, people love hearing you all talk. Right. You yeah, I mean, all, all we got to do is set up a time and day. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely. Um, um, Dorothy says this was a great chat. Hold on one second. I'm just um, answering some questions here about the ticketing. Um, Tim Pim says a great show. They love you. They love you. But the next time you got to show your face. <laughs> you got to. You, are you there? Are you there still? Can you hear me? Uh oh, I think he went out. I think he went out. I hope he comes back in before I aid the chat. But um, the next time, hopefully, y'all, I will. There you go. There he is. Um, the consensus is that this is a great show. They love hearing from me. So yeah, hopefully, the next time, I can so we can all see. You there? <laughs> can you hear me? Apparently, he's cutting in and out, y'all. But um, just so you guys know, I'm going to be talking to him, asking him to show his face the next time. Marie Musa, the show was about a dark-skinned man that was pretty much sharing his experiences with darkism from the time he was young, like a, a young child, up until his adulthood. He's 36 years old. He's a dark-skinned man, and he was sharing his experiences. So that's what the show is about. So, yeah. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Can you hear me? I don't think you can hear me, guys. But anyway, I'm going to see you guys later. I love y'all. I love y'all. And I hope you do visit Florida one day. And if you do visit Florida one day, Tim, Tim, you know how to hit me up. Like, it's easy to contact me. Like, it's not even that big of a deal. Okay? <laughs> you are so welcome. No problem. And once again, y'all, y'all go donate. I encourage y'all to donate. I cannot, I cannot say that. Go donate. Go buy my books because of Again, all this doing is helping you to continue with the dark skin activist tour. Okay, it's very important that I be funded in order to do this work. Okay, I love you guys, and I'm gonna talk to you guys again soon. Signing out, your favorite dark skin, Rashid Silver, the queen of dark skin, the world's first dark skin activist, the woman who put dark skin on the map, Rashida Strober, the world's first dark skin activist. Signing out.